No, I mean, it was kind of like what we talked about beforehand. Um, you know, two pretty even teams back and forth. Um, can't make mistakes at crucial times. We made a couple. They made a couple. I think the difference was they made some big threes. Uh, a couple of them, shot clocks running out, balls laying on the floor. Somebody picks it up, and you know they make that shot. Um, we didn't execute at the end. Um, we got Elena some great looks, um, but <clears throat> you know, a couple crucial plays that uh, we didn't get, and that's the ball game. Turnovers were basically even. Uh, the two teams both shot, you know, close to 50%. They shot better from the three. Mike, speaking of that late execution, um, the Tosh turnover, what were you guys trying to get out of that? We had a, a play for uh, Elena, um, and if they doubled her, uh, Ariel would be wide open at the three, which she was. And we just couldn't make the connection. Um, we were trying to get a, a shot. Um, just, just, just didn't get it. Did they change anything to start getting dual better looks? Or is that just a great player trying to get No, looks? she got going. She got to the free throw line a couple times. Um, we had a play that she scored on, I think, that somebody fell down on. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, those th those things are good. But, I mean, then, you know, that's a that's a good player. Yeah, she went from four to 16 in a hurry. Um, I mean, got to the free throw line. Um, you know, I think that was, excuse me. Lord. Um, you know, and that got her, I think sometimes when you're struggling, getting to the free throw line helps you out and it, it, it kind of, Gave her a chance to see the ball go through the net, too. And then I thought uh, Shakira Austin, you know, first playoff game ever, she you know, really had a big impact for you guys. I just talked about her performance. Yeah, I mean, she's she's kicking herself right now. She knows she missed a couple shots she thought she could make. Um, but, you know, first playoff game and going, you know, head-to-head -head with, you know, good players, uh, you know, I thought she did uh, a commendable job the first game. I don't worry about that as much as like, you know, I mean, you hold your breath and wonder, but, you know, it, you're going to give up something. And um, I don't think there's an easy thing that you can say, well, you know, we held her down. Do we have to do something different? I don't, I don't think that was it. We had good players. She worked a little harder. Um, she capitalized a little bit on a couple mistakes we made on, you know, help a little bit or, or you know, I mean, we got caught uh, just like they did in some switches that neither team were comfortable with, but you don't want to get people, you know, wide open looks either. Um, I just thought that, you know, we gave her and a couple others some looks at threes we probably wouldn't want to get, and yet they shot less threes than they normally do. So um, that's probably a little bit more like playoff basketball. It's a little bit more grinded out. Um, you know, both teams are so good defensively that they made each other work, and yet you say both teams are good defensively, and both teams probably shot better than they normally do uh, because the, the best players stepped up on both teams. It was concerted in the sense that we knew certain spots that we were we were seeing them even kind of double team her before she caught it. So we tried to put her in positions in the second half where she could catch it without an immediate double team, sometimes at the elbows, sometimes on the perimeter. Uh, her post touches most of the time. Um, 
you know, th they were going to come with some sort of a double team. What we did a better job of in the second half was she would kick it out and we would go right back to her sometimes as they were leaving from the original double team. Um, but she also put them in a position where she was facing up and was able to drive it at them where she could see where the help was coming from. Um, you know, I, th I thought she did a good job of finding people. I mean, she had five assists and probably could have had seven or eight. Uh, we missed some open opportunities uh, on passes out of the double teams. And then how much did that, I know she wasn't hitting threes, but how much did that look like a, you know, vintage Elena assessment? Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> your best player gets 26 points in, in a playoff game against a good team and has five assists. Um, you know, we, we, she's probably, you know, unhappy not making threes, but I can't ask much more than the effort we got and I, I can't ask much more from our team in the effort. We got to, you know, make a couple smarter plays. A couple people didn't have the shooting game that, you know, we kind of need them to have. Um, and, you know, if we make those shots on Sunday, then, you know, we can walk out out here for a win. If we don't, we won't. I mean, I don't have a lot of complaints about the overall effort. Uh, I thought, you know, we could have moved the ball maybe a little bit quicker. Um, I thought we had to make maybe a few too many one-on-one -on -one plays. Um, and, you know, I think that slowed us down. I think we get caught. And both teams tried to make the other team do that. Um, you know, not get that nice rhythm uh, to passing the basketball that they've had for the last couple of weeks. And, you know, we've tried to get with our team. Um, and so the game, when, it's, when it gets into those one-on-one -on -one things, can you, can you drive it the right direction to draw an extra defender to get an open three? Can you space the floor exactly the way you want to? I don't think we did a few times. I don't think they thought they did early, but I think late in the game, um, you know, they did a better job of that. Um, I, I thought we had a little bit early, and, and Natasha was trying to get everybody else involved. And, you know, maybe, um, you know, it doesn't happen at the start. But then as, uh, as the first half went along, uh, I mean, I think she'll tell you that, you know, we saw some driving gaps that she could get to, and she exploited them in the first half. Um, you know, we, we were able to get uh, the penetration we wanted uh, quite a bit. I mean, um, you know, I have no complaints with that. I, I I didn't hear the last part of that. And, and how she's feeling, uh, I don't know. You can ask her how she's feeling. Pissed is probably the word, not sore. Pissed. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, every every player at this time of the year is sore, uh, some more than others. And you know, the great players, you know, play through all that. And we have players on our team doing it. I, I'm assuming they probably have a couple. Um, you know. You're probably more sore after a loss than a win sometimes, um, but you know we expect we expect to win no matter who shows up and how they feel, and that's the that's the way it is. And the same will apply when we get ready for Sunday. All right. All right, Coach, why don't you just open us up? Just first. Quick thoughts on the game, and then we'll take some questions here and from the Zoom. Thought it was an amazing game um, for women's basketball fans in general. Um, I thought that was really gritty and gutsy on our part. Um, when Matrix made um, runs, I think we weathered some storms. I thought we had amazing contributions from a lot of people. Um, Ezzy coming in 
playing grip minutes. Tina had a big rebound, and Jewel just bouncing back and um, willing some shots in. Um, this this is what playoff basketball is about. Um, it's good to get this win, but the job is not done. We'll be focused and ready to roll on Sunday. All right, let's open up for questions. Percy? Hey, Coach, I'm just curious about uh, that fourth quarter and particularly those last few minutes. Just what um, maybe didn't go right before then, For Jewel, um, I think you know, you know, first half didn't hit a bucket, um, but I, I'm very proud of her because it shows a lot of growth, and especially um, being here with her as her teammate and knowing in playoff situations that she's been in these and maybe have hasn't pushed through, and she pushed through today and in a big way, in a major way. Um, and it, it wasn't how she started, but how she finished. Um, and those were big buckets down the stretch. We had very good defensive presence and deflections and steals um, in, key, in, key, in key situations um, in that stretch that, they're, that you're referring to. Um, but it, it, it's, we grew up in a, in, in a big way today. And, and I feel like the experience of, that this team has had within the last few weeks has helped that. Uh, with the nine seconds left, that one? Uh, the 40, like the 50 seconds left, it was like under, under. Definitely was a play for Jewel. Um, and just her, you know, we didn't align it um, the how we wanted it to, but um, she made a big a big read. Mm -hmm. Kevin? Uh, Coach, do you think like maybe coming out of the third quarter with some time out there, do you have a message for Jewel as she was heading back to the bench? Yeah. What did she do in the in that possession? Uh, the shot that she took. Um, just wanting her to be aggressive and make the read. What she did with uh, the shot clock was winding down. She passed it to Gabby, and she she wanted it. What we rep is to snap it right back to her. Um, but you know, with the crowd and all of those things going on, sometimes you know you can't hear that that particular um, scheme that we do offensively. And so I just like, keep it and be aggressive. And she she did that. Yeah, you just touched on the crowd. Just talk about yeah. the playoff atmosphere and maybe how that kind of helped you guys more. Of day, yeah, the yeah. crowd was amazing. Um, and the crowds, I've talked about this, have been amazing for the past however many games on the road and at home. And I think that has really gave us – um, the extra push, but also being in these environments, you know, late in the season has helped just for us to stay poised, um, to execute, and um, to utilize the crowd in a positive way. And then talk about the battle between Elena Delanon and Brianna Stewart. I mean, both over 20 points in those games. Um, two of the top players in the game, um, at the top of their game. Um, Deladon had some tough possessions, and you know you try to keep her off of her strong hand, her her left hand, and she still gets to her sweet spots. And again, I I just think Stewie willed her way through this game. wasn't getting a lot of calls in the first half, but huge shots, gutsy shots, big three in the corner, um, big rebounds on the defensive end. And so it's um, as a if I was a fan and watching, I would enjoy that. As a coach, so my armpits were sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're very even with this team. Um, I, I think we, we strive to keep our turnovers low. What happens is that, that at halftime we only had seven, but they had ten points off of that. And so um, I think when we keep our turnovers low, uh, when we finish possessions with uh, rebounds on the defensive end, we're able to shoot at a high clip 50% today. You know what I mean? So um, just – um, just such compartmentalizing every aspect of, you know, our schemes and defense. And um, I think there's advantages in that way, just keeping our turnovers low, making sure we rebound and shooting efficiently. Can you speak about the fans? Like, you just see them play on a different level. Yes. Um, 
it's interesting because I was thinking about our team before, and everyone has been in a play playoff game except for Gabby, um, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. She's been in three? Yeah. Excellent. So I'm glad I didn't say that. <laughs> Edit it out. Um, everybody in our locker room has been in a playoff atmosphere, and specifically with Gabby, she has progressed so much during the year, being a facilitator, defending um, – tough matchups um, and finding her niche on this team. And, you know, I thought, I think today just the adrenaline kind of caused four turnovers for her. But what she does and her activity, you live with it, um, the rebounds, the the aggressiveness, guarding Della Don on, on those possessions, um, she's d done amazing for us all season. Now let me take a couple quick ones from Zoom and then we'll come back into the room. Um, M. Adler, M. go ahead. Yeah, um, sometimes that's just a feel, um, kind of locking eyes with Sue or just kind of not, sometimes not, and just knowing when, you know, she's, her matchup was off the ball, and a lot of times when Sue's off the ball, she's quarterbacking. Um, and so the rotations and the, the talking um, and those possessions really help. Now, if Sue's um, assignment was on ball, maybe, you know, you sub Bree in there um, for the physicality and for, for that. But I think it was necessary to have Sue on the floor verbalizing um, and communicating and leading. Mm -hmm. So you you have Gabby coming on double. You have Sue rotating over to force those tough passes. Just why? What about what about the aspect here from the defense? And when you saw those rotations happen, did you just know that was going to work? Yeah, uh, yes. I mean, yes and no. You know, we, we, we just played the Mystics recently, um, and we adjusted the way in which we go trap Deladon, um, knowing that their alignment is more um, overloaded on the weak side. And so kind of knowing um, where our X outs need to be, um, I think one thing that we need to improve on if we go back to this particular scheme is just closing up those traps a little bit tighter so that we could get deflections and get there on the catch and just KYP um, on closeouts when, when that happens. So we have to get to Atkins and we have to um, just close out short on the other players who aren't snipers from three. Thanks. Thanks yeah. Jen. And uh, Jen Hatfield, Jen, go ahead. Yeah, you pray, you ask the Lord to just blow a wind and make that thing change directions. Um, yeah, I think you know it, it's she's she's so sharp in what she does. She's so efficient in what she does. Um, she makes it tough to send a double team because her teammates are able to knock down shots, and sometimes you do. You think about living with just you know letting Della Don go off and making sure you. Um, stay attached to the shooters and other playmakers on the floor. Um, I think we got to be a little bit more aggressive. I think we have to continue to, to, to take her off of her sweet spot, to take a, her off of her left hand. I think we can improve and do a better job. But that's an amazing player. Um, she's been an MVP in our league. She's an Olympian. And it's not about – it's not how can you stop her. It's more so how can you continue to contain her and, and pick spots to, to be aggressive on her. Yeah, let's go to Chris. Hey, no problem. Yeah, let's go to Christos. It is. Um, we talk about wanting to play our best basketball at the latter part of our season leading up into postseason. We are now in postseason, and I believe that we are playing at a, a, an intensity level that is necessary to win playoff games and to be in playoff games. Um, again, Jewel 
just the growth in her in those minutes in this particular game, knowing that she didn't start off well and, and played her tail off at the end and didn't quit, didn't die, and got some key deflections on the defensive end. Um, it is it is very rewarding to see the growth of our team at this particular jun junction of our season. Thanks, Chris. This one last one from Zoom. Wayne, go ahead. Mm -hmm. They're tough because they're very similar to us if you think about, you know, the particular players that they have. But I think one other layer of of, of them is just their, their backcourt, their guard presence. Um, they're big, they're physical, they're able to score on multiple levels. Um, and then, you know, Heinz Allen and her versatility off the bench and, you know, Kimbrough coming in and knocking down threes. They have a lot of weapons everywhere on the floor and it makes it difficult to, to scheme if you try trap and leave someone open, they're deadly. If you don't trap and go one-on-one, -on -one, they're deadly. So um, the firepower that they have on, in various uh, parts of their their team, um, positions on their team, it's it makes it difficult. And last, of course, for a second, it looked like the Mystics had the game in hand, but your team showed uh, mental toughness and yeah. toughness. Just poise, um, confidence, um, knowing, you know, what we need, knowing the game, what the time was on the clock, not rushing, defensively activity. Um, those are things that, um, you know, we made some winning plays, and that, that's how it is in the playoffs. It's, it's possession by possession basketball. We have time for one last one. Rashawn, go ahead. Um, what do you think of the defense was a little bit more up and down through the first three quarters? So just how happy were you with? Very happy. Um, as the game adjusts, as, you know, Clout got a little bit more aggressive um, on our jams with Della Don, so she's going downhill, then we needed to adjust to that. And um, I thought that our team was very locked in, on the, in onto that adjustment. Um, we started switching, as you guys saw, and it took away some downhill drives, but also Della Don got isolations on our guards. But I thought that we communicated. I thought that we were in her space. And uh, we were just poised and focused. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate Thank it. you.